Hello everybody and welcome to this video and in this video we are going to be kind of bouncing some ideas around. I've been thinking a lot about this and um, I mean I'm probably going to fucking do it but um, it's just really weird and I was looking over like timeline kind of shit um, so basically um, I am wanting to do another Creeperson album and for those of you who don't know I was in this um, punk band this horror punk band called Creeperson um, from like 2004 till about 20 2014 was our last show 2015 we were still trying but just nothing was happening we were still recording <clears throat> we just weren't playing and then um our last release um was in 2016 so um to just give you a hint like a timeline here so Rise of Creeperson was in 2005. That was the first album. We had an EP before that, um, the year before. Um, but those tracks, those same recordings ended up on the album. So, um, And then in 2006, uh, we did Faster Creeperson, Kill Kill. And that one, I recorded all the instruments on because I was living in Oregon at the time. And... Um, the band was still down here in Southern California and I didn't really know how long I was going to be in Oregon. And so it was like this weird thing. And I tried to get the band to come up to record at the studio. Just things didn't end up working out. So I went and did all the um, instruments to it. And um, I think that was kind of one of the failings um, because I only had, I think two days to do the whole album and um on the last song on it like my drum beat like kind of slows down at this part where it's supposed to be picking up and um maybe some people notice maybe some people didn't but it's always been a thing to like that like irks me and then um the next full-length album creeperson reanimated didn't come out until 2011 um so over that five-year period um there were three EPs that came out. Um, there was uh, Creeperson's Final Chapter, Creeperson is Risen from the Grave, and um, there was a three-way split between Others, Die Monster Die, and Creeperson. Um, and that was called Triple Threat of Terror. And then after I sold out of those... Um, we did a digital version of just our five tracks from it and called it a single thread of terror, whatever. Um, so I think that's the right timeline there. Um, and then Creeperson Reanimated came out and this was with like a completely new, um, band. Like, um, the lineup had changed a lot by then, but this version of the band, <clears throat> is basically the one that stuck the longest. Then in 2012, we did Venus Attacks Creeperson, which was another EP. And um, that was when we went on the American or the U.S. tour um, for that album. And that's when we, or I wrote Creeperson Go Home and recorded all the scratch um, tracks while we were in the RV for that. So that was really fun. And so that was 2013. And then, um, then the last release was lost in the green inferno in 2016, which had, um, the three EPs that I was telling you about beforehand. And then a new single called boom cannibal boom. We recorded a whole other album that was going to be called um, Love Camp 69. We recorded two EPs, 
and they like they were very simple of like one was creepers in green and one was creepers in black and that's just what they were whatever we never like really finalized those like i have i have tracks for all of the i think for all of the love camp album the two eps that we recorded as well i have um some of that stuff but I don't have all of it. Um, and Gary, the guitar player, um, he was the producer as well. Like, he produced everything from 2010 on. And um, I just, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. And I don't know what's going on. And so, like, I've been putting off like, doing any Creepers and stuff for, like, I don't know, the last five years, because I didn't know where Gary was, and we had all this material that we already recorded, and so it was like, well, like, as soon as things, like, clear up, and, like, everyone has more time and more availability, we can go back and finish those Um, recordings and clean them up or whatever and so I'm sitting here going okay well like is this ever gonna happen it's been almost six years like since there's been like really any like good communication like I talked to Gary um I think I can't remember if I actually got a hold of him when I was in Big Bear this last time I talked to him a few times when I was in the desert and um, we kept talking about like getting together to do something but it just it it wasn't a feasible thing at the time so I don't know but um, so I was like looking at the songs that are recorded already um the ones that I have versions of and the ones that I don't. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, do I just put out like these as a, like a lost demo, like kind of thing. Cause that would be cool. Like, I mean, they're not, I mean, the worst part about, um, all of those recordings are my vocals because they are just like the scratch vocals that we would do. And the difference with um, that lineup of Creeperson compared to everything else was that with the exception of um, Venus Attacks Creeperson all of the other Creeperson stuff with that lineup would be like I would go to the studio and with new songs and start recording like scratch bits for the songs Um, like scratch guitar, scratch vocals. Um, Sometimes I would do like a scratch drum track if there was like something very particular I wanted. And then um, sometimes I would do a bass track. Sometimes Gary would do a bass track just to like give it a sound. And then we would give that stuff to the rest of the band And give them like a week or so to like kind of go over it. And then we would get together and start rehearsing the songs. And a lot of times those original recordings ended up being the recordings we used. Where like the scratch guitar would stay on there. Um, If my scratch vocals were good, those would stay on there. But um, Gary would re-record Greg and D like doing the drums and the bass and shit. And then Gary would put his guitar tracks down and do his solos and shit. So that always made the album sound a bit different to how we would end up playing them live. And the reason why I say the exception to that is, um, Venus is because those songs, like we would just start playing at practice. I would teach them when we were having band practice and shit. And then when we um, went on tour, we were playing those songs a lot. So those songs got like a lot of repetition. So when we were actually like 
together and playing and able to record. I think when we recorded that, we recorded it live. Like the band bits, we recorded that live. We were in like different um, little compartments. And I think we, we were actually, we did the drums in a different studio. And then we were across the hall um, doing the rest of it. But um, it was just a very different recording. So anyway, like long story longer, um, I really just want to like do some creepers and stuff and like like it would have to be like me doing it myself if like because if I put the unreleased stuff out then I put the unreleased stuff out whatever it's fine it's out um and that would be really cool basically for people who were like were really into creeperson or who are really into creeperson to give them some like oh yeah like by the way like this that wasn't all of the stuff here is this stuff that we did but doing like a new album would just be like so much fun to, for me to do and whether or not um live shows is something to do like it would be great but like um one bridge at a time here but like so I was thinking about it and I was like going through all the albums, like just trying to figure out shit about it. And the one album that has always been like the standard was the first album. And in all of the live shows and shit like that, um, we probably always played more songs from that album than any other album. I was just like kind of thinking about it and I remember um, because a lot of the songs in the first four albums no the first three full length albums and all of the um, EPs and even the two other EPs that never came out all of those songs were written roughly around the same time like within like a year they were all written together and I remember when um the band Creeperson originally started it started because this is so funny but I was doing this acoustic thing like playing at bars and coffee shops and shit and I was going under the name The Matt Wall Massacre. And I wanted to put a band together again. It had been um, a couple years since I had been in a band. And I really wanted to put a band together. And um, this bar, The Liquid Den, I think is what it was called, in Huntington Beach. The promoter at this bar was like, hey, um, I would love to put on a Halloween show. And this is in August. Like, I was playing there in August, and the guy came up to me, and he's like, hey, um, I'm putting on a Halloween show, and it would be really fucking cool, like, because you get, like, the whole spooky shit, and it would be really cool if you can play, but, like, there's going to be other bands playing, and so, like, do you think you could put a band together in time to do a Halloween show? And, of course, as soon as someone asked me a fucking question like that, I'm like, yes, duh, so I'm like, oh, okay, I will put this band together and do this thing now. And the whole Creeperson thing, I had been sitting on that name for a while, so it was, like, not a big stretch to, like, put a fucking band together to do this. And I had a bunch of songs written for a project like that. I just hadn't done it yet. So anyway, so um, I put an ad on Craigslist, and I got a guitar player. Um, Mop, who is seriously probably one of the like most sweet natured fucking humans I have ever fucking met. Just like all around top to bottom, like uber fucking nice guy. And he was amazing. And I don't think I could have actually got Creeperson off the ground if it wasn't for him. Like he was so supportive and was just into it. We found a drummer relatively quickly too. 
But again, we were we still had to jam together and see if it would work. So we were just meeting people. I remember we couldn't find a bass player. Like the guy who was supposed to play bass couldn't show up. And so the bass player from the last band I was in, I called him up and I'm like, dude, I know you don't want to be in a band with me again, you know. Um, but if you can just do this um, like jam for me to audition these guys, it would be so fucking amazing. And so he did it and we played like bleed for me last house. Actually, I don't even think we played last house I think We just played bleed for me and pursue a plan nine. Oh, in Cleveland. Okay. Now the, this is where I was going with this. The reason why I picked these songs is because, and the songs that ended up being the first Creeperson album is because out of all the songs I had written, these 13 songs were the easiest songs to play. And because they were so easy, I thought they would be the easiest to learn for a band that had to get together really quick and do a show in like a month and a half. Because now it's like um, mid-September. So I took the 13 easiest songs I had... And um, I still needed a bass player. And um, we got this guy who was a friend of a friend. And he did, I think, the first two shows. And then he quit to do another project. And then I ended up um, teaching. This is so funny because I was just talking about this sort of thing. And this has happened again here. I ended up teaching my friend Shank how to play um, bass and how to play the songs just so he could be a part of the band and we could hang out more and shit like that. Um, so the whole idea behind this whole fucking story I just blabbered on about is that those were the easiest songs to learn, the easiest songs to play, the most simple songs that I had. And that album still like outperforms like all the other albums. I honestly think I would have to double check, but I'm pretty sure about this that the sales, views, listens, all that information you get. Like all the other albums combined don't do as well as that first album did. And so I was thinking about it and I was like, "Oh, okay. So basically that type of music really excels when the music is really simple and catchy and straightforward and no frills. And I'm like, got it. So if that's really the case, this is like now experiment mode. Um, in order to have that happen again, I need to make a very simple, straightforward catchy Creeperson album. So that's kind of the plan right now to do another album and do it like with the idea of how the first album was done. And, um, you know, maybe that will go over well and maybe it won't. Cause like as the Creeperson music evolved, it went from a very misfits sounding band to by the next album, there was a lot of um, kind of early goth influences in it. And then by the time we got to reanimated, I feel like there was a lot more rock, but more like metal rock if that rock metal whatever the fuck you call it um and then i was trying from there to just go more like dirty rock and roll like um like iggy and the stooges and new york dolls and stuff like that and i think that came across okay but um i just don't think it was right for the project so anyway um, long story over now. Um, I'm just, I'm really considering doing another Creeperson album now. And, um, it's, 
it's been gestating the last couple days and then just recording the new um solo ep um just got me thinking about it again and um you know like you never know how something's gonna be until you fucking do it so um i guess i'm just gonna do it so eventually um here soon maybe there's going to be new creepers and stuff and i don't know if it's going to be a single or if i'm going to do a whole album right off the bat i might just start with a single and see how i feel about it so um if that's the case then that's the case and um hopefully you guys dig it if you're into it but um you can find creepers everywhere like on all the thingies so if you want to give it a listen um go check it out all right well that's it just me um thinking out loud and trying to figure out what project to do next so until next time i will talk to you guys later bye bye